The Premier does not run the upper house. This is why I like upper houses. It's why I like minor parties, because at moments like these, they are able to stand up for logic. As I showed you last night, but it's worth showing you again, the maths in the upper house. You need 21 to get anything done. Labor and the Greens together is 18 votes. Liberal and the National Party together is 12, and the crossbench is 11. They need at least another three to get anything done. However, quite interestingly, apparently the Green right now is on leave, which means they're going to need four. So where do these four come from? We got in touch with every member of the Upper House crossbench today in Victoria. This is what they are saying. Animal Justice Party, maybe. They'll probably end up voting for it. The Justice Party have said no to the 12 months, no to six months, but maybe a month to month extension. So there are two votes there. So potentially that could be your three game over. The Reason Party have said no, but that's only the 12 month thing and they've sold out in the past. Adam Somurek is, of course, the bloke who was booted from the Labor Party due to the branch stacking that was revealed. No comment from him. Coming is another independent who says no to 12 months, but maybe month to month. The Liberal Democrats say no, because they're sensible. Libertarians. Shooters say no, because they're sensible on this one as well. Sustainable Australia says maybe, although 12 months is too long and Transport Matters say no. So strangely, we're going to have this situation where you're going to see headlines saying that the upper house is going to rebuff Daniel Andrews, that the upper house has said no, that this plan is dead in the water. Now, what's going to happen is that the 12-month extension is an ambered claim. A little bit, well, like when you work out, mm, how am I going to get a pay rise out of the boss? Well, if you're able to negotiate these things, you turn around and say, oh, I want $100 extra, expecting that maybe you're going to get 25. And so then we move back to a far more reasonable number of 50. And then we settle on 40. And you end up being the winner. Andrews will find a way to get this through the upper house. I would love to think that all of these people can hold the line, but they have already told him what his path is. Month to month extensions. If he has to settle for that, as his version of negotiations, he's going to still have an extended power that will get renewed every 30 days to be able to put Victoria back into lockdown. When do you think exactly he's going to ask for this month by month? Is it going to be when there's zero cases at the end of September 13? Or is he going to try and do it as soon as possible while the cases are still over 100 a day, meaning that most likely, close to the end of the next month, they wouldn't be at zero cases a day? This is going to get extended. I hope that the upper house sees that there is essentially no difference between one month and 12 months. There has to be, at the very least, if you are going to do that deal, in writing, the methodology, how many cases over how many days before a lockdown is triggered? How many cases over how many days before the curfews are instigated? And then on the downside, how many cases over how many days before the curfew ends? How many cases in how many days before the lockdowns are lifted? Are there carve-outs dependent on, if you're in a regional area, like Mildura, that's never had a case? Like the couple of dozen cases, a couple of dozen councils in Victoria that currently have zero cases. This is the responsibility of the upper house. We wait, we watch, we see. But don't you love it? A couple of weeks ago, the health minister said, we shouldn't be in parliament. I don't want to answer any questions. A couple of weeks later, Premier says, quick, bring back parliament so I can have more power. Good luck with that, Premier.